Hey everybody, J-Man here, continuing my review of classic Doctor Who. We started with John Pertwee because he's my favorite Doctor. Tom Baker is the best Doctor. That's obvious and a no-brainer. If someone's telling you Tom Baker's not the best Doctor, you need to question their level of fandom of Doctor Who. But you're allowed to have your favorites. Just because someone's the best, that doesn't mean that's your personal favorite. And John Pertwee is my personal favorite and I just love him. Um, everything he says and does is the best. That's it. <laughs> That's my review of the third doctor. Everything that he says and does is, uh, is the best. Uh, let's talk about Inferno. This was the last story in John Pertwee's first season of Doctor Who. It's pretty damn good. So let's talk about it using my space system. Story, pacing, artistry, characters, enjoyment. Each category gets a score between zero and two. Two's the best you can get in any category. One thing you must know about space is that I am not comparing Doctor Who, which is my favorite show of all time, to Star Trek, which is my second favorite show of all time. I don't compare those two. I'm not even comparing it to Star Wars. Um, I'm comparing it to itself, if that makes any sense to you. I'm grading these Doctor Who stories against Doctor Who stories, right? So there's a lot. There's 60 years now of this Doctor Who. Um, obviously, the last few weren't that good if you've seen my other videos. However, Classic Who um, is still awesome. There's good and bad. There's some of them that are better than others. I actually enjoy pretty much like one, for sure, one through 12, like Doctors 1 through 12 including 12. I pretty much like all of it to different degrees, right? So we're, we're trying to be a bit nuanced here. I, I, look, John Pertwee's my favorite doctor, so I'm just going to tell you that John Pertwee is the best. But that's not a real review. I'm going to review this based on Doctor Who, um, you know, that you know and, and you're comparing it to. So if I give this a low score, I'm just saying this is a lower Doctor Who story. Any Doctor Who story is going to be something that I'm going to be excited about, especially if it's John Pertwee or Tom Baker. Um, but the storyline of this one, I'm giving it a 1.5. This was actually pretty cool. It could have gotten a one because it seems a bit generic. Like, okay, they're drilling into the into the center of the into the center of the Earth. However, we all know this one's got that shift. So after a few parts, this is a seven parter. Uh, I think after the uh, three parts, it switches to an alternate parallel universe where the brigadier is brigade leader lethbridge stewart and liz shaw is just like some meanie and all of the characters and well not all of the, they're all sort of the same character but just because the world is different they develop differently in that world like brigadier or brigade leader is still a tough you know like unit general but because of the all parallel world and how they've developed He's more of an a-hole and he's really strict. So um, it was really cool to have that twist happen. And I think it was really neat. Uh, so overall, this story is cool. Plus you have those guys that as they start getting deeper, there's this substance that comes out. It turns some of the scientists into these like kind of green wolfman, char wolfman characters and fur knights or something. I don't know what you call them. Um, they're pretty neat, actually. Uh, but, uh, so yeah, 1.5 for the story. It's really cool. A lot of cool stuff with just like paradoxes. Like, wait, I can't take you guys back cause it'll destroy the timeline and you know, stuff like that. The pacing, look, this is a seven parter. I love the Silurians. That was a, an amazing, it was seven parts. It did not need to be seven parts, but it was still really good. <clears throat> the ambassadors of death. That was really drawn out. I still overall liked it. It's definitely the weakest of his first uh, stories in his first season. I'm giving the pacing 1.5 on this one. It is seven parts. There's no Doctor Who story. Well, Genesis of the Daleks is pretty awesome. Well, we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, yeah, this didn't need to be seven parts. Uh, it, it is a bit drawn out. However, it's still pretty good. Like I'm not really bored through any of them. I just acknowledge that really it needed to be tighter. And I think after this uh, first season of John Pertwee, if just going by memory, because I've seen all these already, I'm, this is me re-watching them for maybe the third time or whatever, right? I think you could condense some of them. But I think going forward, they're shorter uh, stories. So um, that's always going to be a bit better. But still, the pacing is pretty good on this one. I liked it anyway. 
um, the artistry, I'm actually gonna give it a 1.5. <clears throat> Normally this, these earth-based ones, they're not gonna get more than a one because it's always in a rock quarry it's, or, or it's in some factory or it's in like a lab or something or like some offices. Really, this one is going back and forth between the drilling area, uh, his sort of console. Like, So he's got a garage, the doctor has a garage where he's removed the console and put the t t TARDIS console and put it in the garage and he's working on air. There's that location. There's sort of outside of the factory and then there's the interior where they're drilling and maybe Brigadier's office. Like there's not really many locations here. So really it'd be a one because it looks okay and that's fine. However, the I'm giving it an extra 0.5 because the creatures looked pretty cool. The Infernites is what I'm calling them. Um, they're pretty they're pretty scary. Like I mean, obviously they're not scary now, and I've watched Terrifier and Saw movies, so obviously they're not scary. But they were sure as well would have been scary back then for little kids watching this to be like, oh crap, these guys are creepy. I mean, the Autons are kind of your, your your top dog uh, creepy characters, but these guys are pretty messed up and they're pretty scary. So, and the makeup looks pretty good. Um, and again, I'm, I'm judging this based on budgetary constraints and the BBC just being crazy, right? They're, they're like, yeah. Doctor Who is under such uh, just stress and, and pressure to get stuff done. So you're, it's, it's great. It's amazing we got anything quality. Um, but yeah, I like the artistry. Characters. If I don't give this a two out of two for characters, there's something wrong here. It's John Pertwee. I just told you anything he says or does is amazing. Uh, Liz Shaw is awesome. She's my third favorite companion. Uh, I love Liz Shaw. She's awesome. And she's on fire. And she's got the dual roles. Both are awesome. She does a lot of good stuff when she's regular Elizabeth Shaw. And when she's the meanie with the black hair dark-haired Elizabeth Shaw she's pretty cool there too and Carolyn John's awesome uh, I just love her and um, she did really good in the in these episodes like Brigadier is just one of my favorite characters uh, in television I, the, Nicholas Courtney is just like awesome um, he was great in both roles he was a bastard in um, in that parallel universe he was a total a-hole the doctor's crazy too. There's a lot of good side characters. This is one of the, this might have the, out of out of the entire, yeah, maybe out of the entire season, the side characters in this one are pretty good and they're memorable too. And you got the the the, the doctor who's just insane. He's like, I don't care. I've got to drill, drill. Like, I'll do whatever you want. You got the safety guy who's like, dude, like you gotta relax. You've got um, the doctor's assistant. She's a pretty girl, uh, smart uh is in charge of stuff getting stuff done there's a lot of positive roles here for women and they keep you you keep hearing this nonsense of how oh doctor who didn't have anything positive you know blah 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 th this kind of garbage that they spew now nowadays it's a stinking lie firstly it's a it's a disgusting and stinking lie elizabeth shaw was awesome from friggin day one the assistant here girl she's awesome too so, and they're not just there to be pretty faces. They do stuff and get shit done. So it's a stinking lie. Don't let anyone tell you any different on that. Um, but yeah, two out of two for the characters. Everyone in this is, is, is great. Enjoyment factor, it's two out of two. Obviously, it's John Pertwee and Liz Shaw, who are like my two favorites. So uh, yeah, uh, Brigadier, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I love this one. I thought it was awesome. The major negative is that it's a bit long. Look, that's just part of classic doctor who you're gonna have to get over it <laughs> like that that's just how it goes i am okay with slow moving science fiction if i feel that there is movement and i feel that the characters are good and the story is progressing to something and there's some kind of excitement going on and for me it was in this one uh, i'm giving this a total of 8.5 out of 10 so for me it's just almost in like top tier doctor who it's very close nine or ten is like top tier Doctor Who. I mean, 10. I mean, spoiler alert, should I even tell you that Genesis of the Daleks is getting a 10? Like, I mean, come on. <laughs> so there, there's some obvious 10 out of 10s, right? <laughs> this one is like not not near as good, but it's definitely in the top topper part. Um, I love this episode, the story. Overall, John Pertwee's entire first season, I really liked. Ambassadors of Death is the only one that I would say, you know what, if you're gonna nitpick 
maybe you could skip that one. But I don't like telling people to skip stories because I think they're all really good and they all have something to offer. Um, I think Silurians is my favorite out, out of these. I don't know. I just love the Silurians and their base, uh, their base and their story, the way they look was so cool. Um, they're awesome. I don't have a Silurian figure classic who I have, I mean, I got fig, I've got almost every monster, every figure that they made for every monster that John Pertwee battled, I've got a figure for, and I've got almost every John Pertwee figure that they've made. Now, we don't see them here. I only have a few things in my Doctor Who's shelf. They're, they're all packed up nicely in a, in a, in a, in a, in a container, um, to keep them safe. But, uh, yeah, I love this story. So there you go. Let me know in the comments what you thought of all of these Doctor Who's. And please like and share the video because, you know, whenever I'm negative, I did I gave the these specials, I gave them like a 5 or something out of 10 or a 6 out of 10. I was very difficult on these newer Doctor Who's and everyone got on my case and said I was negative and all this. And it's a lie because I love Doctor Who and I'm proving it by doing these videos. So please like them. Um, and again, if you want to subscribe, subscribe. Uh, and we do have uh, um, we do have memberships as well. So check that out. All right, everybody. Until next time.